Alrighty guys, UPS man just dropped off a package and in this package we have the Gigabyte X79S UP5. This motherboard is, um, well first of all it's a motherboard, um, but this motherboard was announced I believe at Computex 2012 and it hit the market a little while ago and what makes it special is that it uses the C606 server chipset as opposed to the X79 desktop um, level work level uh, chipset. So this is more of a workstation oriented board. Uh, this is this is not fair. It's such a mess. But this is a workstation oriented board, and what that C606 server server chipset brings is a buttload of SATA ports and actually it's SAS ports so on top of the normal X79 um, two US two SATA 6 ports and four SATA 3 ports on top of those you get eight more uh, SAS ports and I believe they support up to six gigabits per second from what my research has shown so yeah but <clears throat> anyways we've got this board here and so, again, what's really exciting about this board is that you can run, like, a giant SSD RAID. Like, you can put eight SSDs in RAID and use that as a giant storage drive and um, not even need a RAID card, which is actually what I plan on doing with this eventually. By the way, I didn't pay too much attention to the box here. Um, sorry, I'm a little bit far away from the camera, so I can't really see the screen that well. But on the front... The, you know, details some things. You get a free Wi-Fi card with this, because that's what the dash Wi-Fi at the end of the name is. <clears throat> so you get a free little Wi-Fi card, you plug it in, and it adds Wi-Fi. Um, Five-year warranty, because Gigabyte is proud of their stuff. And the UD5 stands for Ultra Durable 5. And, again, that's why they offer a five-year warranty on it, because the all the parts are, you know, really well built in here it's you know top picked modules and whatever you want to say it's it's high quality parts that are not going to go bad anytime soon and gigabyte is willing to offer you a five-year warranty just to you know prove that to you on the back here one of the main things that they seem to outline is their um i believe these are like stacked mosfets i believe is what they're saying or whatever but it's a it's a more efficient power stage that puts off less heat which in turn provides better power to your CPU and also it keeps your CPU cooler because the general area is um, cooler and if the area around the CPU is cooler you know it's just going to be cooler for the actual CPU so that's a giant thing they detail right here they just tell you all the ins and outs of the board a little bit more about the Wi-Fi card the 3D BIOS it is a 3D model of the motherboard and you can click on the actual parts of the motherboard like you can click on the CPU socket to overclock and stuff. Um, it sounds interesting, but really it's kind of a gimmick because it seems like it's actually going to make it harder to navigate the BIOS. But for the features that this board brings, I'm willing to deal with that. Anything else? Alrighty, so it seems we're actually done with the information in the box. We'll fold this little tab open. Oh, I was hoping to have a dramatic reveal shot for the camera, but, um, yeah, there's another box. So we'll take the top box that contains our motherboard, we'll set that over here, and underneath we will go over the accessories first. So I'm going to go to the instruction manuals. You get a user's manual with a couple CDs inside. One is for the Wi-Fi card, and one is for the actual chipset and stuff. Um, you know, if you're going to use the Wi-Fi card to set up your internet, then you need that driver. And when installing Windows, chances are you're going to use RAID with this board, so you might actually need the driver CD. But still, download the latest drivers as soon as you can. Like, once your system's up and running, download the latest drivers offline. Um, <laughs> I've got a Wi-Fi card here. And what's nice about this card, you might not really want to use it on this Gigabyte board because, you know, that's not what the board is oriented towards at all. But this is just a, a freestanding card. It uses a little um, a USB internal header and a PCI 1X lane. Uh, my camera zoomed out quite far. I don't know if you can see. But 
<sighs> so you could plug this into any computer you want and just install the drivers and add Wi-Fi to any desktop computer that you know has the proper uh, slot for it. So that might come in handy for me someday, actually, because if I build like a home theater PC, even though that would normally be wired, I might just want to add this in there for like extra, you know, just in case. So I'll keep that handy. Um, you get two antennas because that I do believe it's a dual band Wi-Fi card. So you get your two antennas that screw over the back of there. You get a two-way SLI bridge. I'm going to assume that this is a two-way crossfire bridge. Yes, indeed. Um, I believe this board actually supports up to three-way SLI and crossfire, but you know you could do it, and you'd need to uh, supply your own bridge for it. But really, that's not what this board is for. So that's probably why they don't include it. And I'm zoomed out really far, so I'm actually going to walk over here real quick and zoom in just. Just a tad bit more so I can start showing you these accessories a little bit better. Um, okay, so here we've got our USB cable that plugs into that Wi-Fi card because it does need USB. We've got a Gigabyte case, case badge if you wanted to use that. You get six SATA cables three of which are dual straight, and the other three have right angle connectors on one side. And I was wrong about the uh, three-way SLI bridge. Gigabyte actually does include a three-way SLI bridge in the package. It's matte black, just like the motherboard, so that's real nice. Um, I'm assuming that the sticker could be taken off because that's kind of ugly, but it's a nice matte black bridge, so yeah. But seriously, um, for this motherboard, you're probably going to want to add sound cards and network cards and RAID cards before you go three-way SLI with the thing. We've got a a um, front panel USB 3.0 bracket. If your case does not have USB 3.0 built in, you use this. Fits in a 3.5 inch bay. It comes with the mounting screws, and yeah, there's not much else to say about it. It's, Pretty hefty, you know, it seems, well, pretty sturdy. And I was actually so excited to get this motherboard that I paid a retarded amount of money to get UPS overnight shipping here. Sadly, with the weekend and the holiday, it still took like three or four days to get here. But, you know, I'd still be waiting if I hadn't got UPS overnight. So, I'm going to say it's worth it because I'm actually really excited to get to um, plug in this motherboard. And last but not least, we get our rear I.O. panel that outlines all of your outputs. So we've got our motherboard here. Last but definitely not least, you know. It's wrapped in this little bag. Let's see where the bag opens. Even through the bag, the blue on this motherboard is just freaking amazing. I'm not even going to lie, that's half the reason that I was looking at these Gigabyte boards. I was looking at the UD5 because of the blue. Because I'm going to be switching over to like a blue color scheme for this particular rig. But the main thing that actually sold me on this board is these. All of these, man. There's so many SATA ports on here. It's just ridiculous. But we'll get to those in a bit. Um, this board is actually quite massive. It's... It goes the same route that Asus does. They add just a little bit more off to the side of the board uh, so they don't have to change the form factor of the motherboard. But by doing that, just adding a little bit more, they can actually cram on so much more technology. It's, it's crazy. Um, yeah, I don't know what else to say. You've got a beefy heat sink right here. I mean, this thing's massive. And it's got two heat pipes that go over here. This actual heat sink right here does not cool anything. It's just a heat spreader. And this one cools the uh, power delivery components. But the reason that they've got this over here that cools nothing is actually so some of the heat can come up from the chipset and get vented off over here. Because this chipset, being the C606, actually dissipates like twice as much heat as the X79 chip. So it needs this extra over here to dissipate more heat. Um... <clears throat> So yeah, I guess the chipset's covered, which is actually kind of the interesting feature of this board. So 
as with all X79 boards, well, pretty much, um, you've got eight dims of memory in quad channel. You you don't have to add these four at a time, but you know it's made to be added four at a time. Down here, we've got a PCI Express. These are all Gen 3, I believe. Um, 16X, 8X, 8X, uh, 16X, and here's how the, oh, and you've got an old school PCI, which is actually kind of useful on a workstation board, depending on who you are. Because if you're in like the music industry and you've got a sound card that you just love a lot, that might use that, you know. Personally, I'm not going to use that because um, I use the like more modern sound technology and stuff, but yeah. Anyways, so if you run just two graphics cards or something like that in these two slots, actually these two slots, you get 16x, 16x. If you wanted to run like three-way SLI in these three, you get 16x, 8, 8. And then this right here is a constant 1x, and this right here is a constant 4x. So in my case, I'll be running a graphics card here, graphics card here, um, probably, and then a network and a sound card in these two. So my graphics cards will be at 16x and 8x, and then I'll have like a sound card in here, and yeah. Moving back up here, we've got, we will, um, we'll take a look at the CPU socket with all of those glorious pins. This does support Xeons because it uses a C606 server chip. So you can put in a Xeon 8 core if you want. Unfortunately, you cannot overclock those on here. But if you use a Intel i7, you know, like consumer level, enthusiast level chip in here, then you can overclock, which is what I will be doing. Um, up here, we've got our power delivery underneath here with their dual stacked MOSFETs or whatever they're called. <clears throat> and so it supplies you just ridiculous power to the CPU. According to Tom Logan's video review, um, it actually has horrible voltage droop, which, you know, that was kind of something that I had to sit there and think about for a while, and I was like, oh, do I really want to? But in the end, I did get this board because I want these SAS ports really bad, and I don't, I don't overclock tremendously, you know, ever, so that's not going to be a huge deal for me. Up here, we've got a single 8-pin. Uh, where's the camera? We've got a single 8-pin uh, EPS power connector. There is no supp supplementary power to the uh, PCI lanes because you probably won't need it. Up here in the corner, we've got a power button, you know, 24 pin. And so, yeah, now we'll take one more look. Well, actually, um, let's go over fan headers. You've got one at the back here for your uh, rear exhaust fan. You've got one here. 4 pin, 3 pin, 3 pin, and then you've got a CPU fan here. Um, so yeah, not too many fan ports on here, but you're probably going to use like some sort of external fan controller. Either a software one, like the Corsair Link like I have, or a physical front panel, you know, turn the knob to change the fans or something. But yeah, so if you're going to need a ton of fans, you're going to need an external fan controller of some sort. Got dual BIOS chips down here, you know, that correspond to that button in the back. And now let's talk about all these freaking SAS and SATA ports. Alrighty guys, and we are back. I have moved the camera to zoom in onto the SATA, uh, SATA and SAS ports. These two white ones right here are the SATA uh, 3 6 gigabit per second off of like a normal X79 chipset. These four are SATA 2 3 gigabit per second. So these six right here you would get off of a normal X79 chipset. So what really makes it special is all of these right here, all these gray ones. There's a total of eight of them here. And those support RAIDs 0, 1, 5, and 10. And these are SAS ports that support up to SAS 2, I think it is, which SAS 2 is actually 6 gigabit per second. And so, yeah, you get all of those supporting full bandwidth. You can also use them with SATA drives. So. Or if you were, you know, building a full high-end workstation, you could use SAS hard drives, but I will be using SATA SSDs for those, and all of these are supported off of the chipset, which means they're going to be really fast, as opposed to if they were like a Marvell controller or something, you know, which is, you know, decent, 
but like the, you know the things they include on the Asus Rampage 4 Extreme for the extra two ports it's not really suitable for you know high-end SSDs and stuff like that whereas these are from the chipset so they'll do just fine with any um, drives you throw at them so I'm going to be hopefully running like two boot SSDs off here eight storage SSDs here probably like two um, hard drives on here just for kind of backup so I can set that to be cloned from the SSDs like nightly or something and two optical drives on there of course you know all those drives that I just listed are like two thousand dollars alone so you can tell right now that this rig's going to take quite a while to be built fully but you know it will come in time so we're also going to turn around and take a one more look at the rear IO so you know we'll take one more look again you've got your PS2 port that supports either a keyboard or a mouse two USB 2.0 ports um, your uh, that's apparently an overclock button. I thought it would have been a clear CMOS, but that is apparently your automatic overclocking button, like your OC profile. You press it, it just automatically overclocks your CPU for you to a safe level. You've got a dual BIOS switch, which is actually handy, and it's quite common on the newer boards because if you brick one BIOS or get a really unstable overclock, you can switch over to your default BIOS and get back up and running. There's a light down here that, um, from what the rear I.O. panel has told me, that actually does indicate when you, if you clear your CMOS with the button that's somewhere on the board, it will like flash that or whatever. Um, you've got a FireWire port. You get a USB 2.0 port. Down here, this little blue port, I don't know how well you can see because the lighting in this room kind of sucks, but this down here is a SATA, an eSATA port. And it also has USB, so you can use it either way. Down here we've got another eSATA port. This is strictly an eSATA port, nothing else. Two more USB 2.0 ports. Those are only USB 2.0 ports, nothing else. Four USB 3.0 ports. Um, dual Ethernet, which unfortunately you cannot team those. That's That just really sucks for me. Like That was one of the cool things that I, I was reading through the spec list. I'm like, ooh, dual Ethernet, are they teamable? And I had to search for a while to figure it out, and they're not teamable, and it kind of sucks. But, you know, in the end, you've got enough PCI lanes to put in your own Ethernet card if you choose. And you've got a built-in sound chip that goes to 7.1 audio with optical out. Now, on a high-end board like this, if you're using it for video or audio production, you're probably going to add your own sound card in. Um, yeah. So you'll probably be adding a really high-end sound card, which is probably why they didn't go too high-end with this. But if you were just using this as a desktop, you might still want a sound card, but this would probably be decent, which is how I'll be using it until I actually buy my you know, high-end sound card, whatever I decide on. So, yeah, at this point, I think we are all out of stuff to talk about on this board. Um, normally, I would do the unboxing as one part and the overview of the board as another, but it seems that I've actually done it all in this one video. So, let me get you guys a nice finishing shot here. Um, this board is just ridiculous, man. I, I'm just so excited to install it. Like, the blue on it looks so perfect. All the SAS ports are going to be psychotic when I have SSDs for them. You know, dual, or, well, two-way SLI, plus sound cards and Ethernet cards and... I mean, you can see where this is going. This is not going to be an entry-level computer whatsoever. And nope, this is not going to be for gaming at all. You know, you don't need a ton of SSDs or like an Ethernet card. You don't need that for gaming. This is going to be my workstation board that I edit video and pictures on. And all that stuff. And I'm going to, I'm trying to sell my Rampage 4 Extreme for now. And then I'll buy back whatever is the new technology in the future. Because for now, I'm focusing on this build. So anyways, we'll see how selling those other parts go. And uh, yeah. But I think the unboxing of the Gigabyte X79 SUP5 Wi-Fi is done with at this point. So if you enjoyed the video, please feel free to click the like button and leave me a comment. If you want to see more of my videos, please click subscribe. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you in my next videos.